All right, so this time I'd like to run the uh, MAP uh, 205 mini cell uh, showing the AB Micrologic 1500 inputs as we run through it in manual mode. All right, so first of all, we've already connected up our PLC to our laptop, as I've shown here. And uh, what I've got here is the MAP 205 or sorry, the, the Alan Bradley sitting on the top. I've also have the input and output tables opened up so that we can see this as I go through and uh, video the transitions here. So let me go through and fade that in. Okay, so this is the MAP 205 system by SMC. All right, uh, I've got the starter button here. I'm going to switch this into the, um, uh, oops, let me move the camera just a little bit. Missed a few of those outputs over there. Urgh. There we go. Should be a little bit like that. We can get all the inputs on the top, outputs on the bottom. I'm going to switch this into manual mode. All right. So what you should have seen there is that number three has been turned off. Oh, I'm sorry, turned on for manual mode. Okay. So now when I go through and push the start button, what's going to happen is it's going to go through and first of all, check to see if I have all of my parts. Sorry, I'm not really good with this. Uh, there it goes. Um, so what I have is down in the bottom corner, I have, well, let's start with the base. The base is the first part that we put on here. And um, so after the base, uh, what we are going to do is to go through and put uh, the bearing inside of the base down there on the bottom. And after we get the bearing in, then there is a shaft to put in. After the shaft is put in, then what we have is the uh, the cover. And then after it puts it all together, it will then go through and deconstruct it. OK, so let's take a peek right here. We're going to start off by keeping an eye on the cylinder here. All right. Um, sorry, the, the cylinder as it pushes the base forward. But uh, first thing that's going to happen is it's going to come over here and check to see um, if we have our parts here. So let me scroll back over here. Let me start this up. And you'll see what happens. It came down there and it's going through and checking the vacuum. And if it has vacuum, it knows that there's a part there. It also went through and looked at a couple optical sensors. Down here, there's an optical sensor. You can see there's an optical sensor, um, part of the optical sensor. I won't go through and explain what that is, but what you'll see is that uh, it detects on both sides of that. As you can see, as I put that part in and out, the light comes on. So that first stage was actually checking to see if it was there over here. I have another light sensor here as I pick it up. I don't know if you can tell that little light is coming on there. When it's removed. And as far as the vacuum sensor, I'm going to have to kind of position myself over here. Uh, there is a vacuum right here. There's no light on. When the light comes on, you know that the vacuum is uh, set there. Below that is the ejector for creating the vacuum. All right. Oops around here uh, a little bit slow all right so let's go through the next step what you're going to see here is the cylinder is going to slide forward you'll see the indicator lights come on we'll keep track of that on the plc and also up there in the corner all right so you'll see that it's forward there i'll let you take an eye on the inputs as those going in and out so what's going to go to it's going to come down here and check to see if that is put in there the correct way if it was upside down that cylinder would not be able to come down inside there. All right. Yeah, plenty of parts. Let's go ahead and push the button. When it comes down, you'll see that there is a indicator light. Maybe you can see it. Maybe you can't. That indicator light has come on. Let us know that it has been able to reach all the way to the bottom. You can track the inputs to see which one that was. All right. What happened here is this is a uh, uh, non-metallic part. So what happened is the sensor here was not detecting a part. A part has fell down and you'll see that that sensor is lit up. So you can go back and look at the inputs to see which sensor that could have uh, potentially triggered there uh, on, the, on the recording there. All right, so now what we're gonna do is push that the uh, base forward. Um, swing it around here. There is a couple sensors, or actually is there yeah, I think there's just the one sensor here at the end. 
I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that light come on when it comes forward. I'll go ahead and start it up. When it goes full forward, you probably saw one of the input lights come on there. All right, so it's forward. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move the bearing and put that inside. Let's see if I can get in there here. Uh, what you'll see um, on this is it has a gripper. It's an inside gripper that allows us to get into the cavity. You'll see some lights there. Those are lights that tell us what the position of that radial arm is. Push it again. Oops, there we go. The uh, gripper grabbed it, moves it forward. The light on the side there tells us all the way forward. Release and return to the neutral position. Sensor went down there to show that it's this arm, radial arm has lowered so that it can grab the shaft. Um, there are actually two sensors on the bottom that you can't not see here. I've got a picture I'll try to include a little bit later, which tells whether that gripper is closed or not. All right, so the sensor that has, has come up here. Now we're going to swing forward here. You'll watch the two sensors here. All right, it knows it's now in position, so it can lower it and release. And I'm going to try to change my angle here. I've got to keep pushing this button here. So it's a little tricky. So we're going to start up the vacuum part here. So now that I'm the back here, you can actually see the vacuum kick on. Reach over. Oh, well. One more time. So you'll see that it did form a vacuum. As soon as it went down, it had that vacuum. And so it came up, and that, that's how it knows that it actually has the part, because if it didn't have a part, it wouldn't be forming the vacuum. All right. Scroll back over on the side here. What you'll see is we have indicators here to tell whether it's forward into the load area. All right. Let's come forward. Two indicators to identify whether it's up or down. All right. Retract. And we're now ready to just deconstruct it. Normally what happened is this would be picked up and moved out to our assembly line. But in this case, we're actually going to deconstruct it. So first of all, back out there, come down, check for the vacuum. All right, vacuum's good. Continue up, over, put it down. Next part to come out is the shaft. So let me get angled here so you can get a better look at that. down and pick up the shaft. Next step, press, 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 all right, press again, now, 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 and check the last part. All right, and then the process continues again. So that's just the uh, manual mode of running the MAP 205. Uh, hopefully, uh, you'll be able to go through and follow all the steps there with the uh, indicator lights on the Allen Bradley, as well as by watching the lights that appear uh, down below. So by hopefully the um, not too much lag in Zoom here so that the video uh, will sync up well with the uh, the lights and the PLC. All right, there we go, the SMC MAP 205.